Could you speak oh, some German? Yeah, they, no, they, it was a train run by GIs. <laughs> yeah, you, you, the, the, the trains, when they started running, we had railroad battalions and they were soldiers that fixed up the trains. They, they were soldiers running it. They always told me Eisenhower had the headquarters in a train and then when the front moved up, well, the, the headquarters can move up, see? Mm -hmm. That was pretty handy. Do you have more photographs than what you have in your books? What's that? Do you have more photographs than the ones you have in your books? No, I put all the good ones in both books. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. And do you still have more books, or have you given them all away? No, and uh, I still got some, but Steve Fisher's got some that I didn't put all together that I could put together if I had to. Have you donated one to the Waterville Historical they, Society? The Waterville Library has one. Uh-huh. Super. And I also wrote a book on my brother that makes brooms, which is a different subject. He learned how to make brooms in, in uh, the State School for the Blind. Right. Is he still living? No, he No, you, you said you were the last one. Yeah. Well, I got... Brother Roland and Brother Jurgen are in the rest home in Lynn. That's all that's left. We're all three in the rest home. Yeah. Do you get over to see him very often? Yeah, I used to. I'd call Roland every once in a while. Jurgen is a little hard to talk to. but. So tell us about your brother and his brooms. Yeah, I'll show you what I got. Uh -oh. Ready for me to talk? Uh, you bet. Well, one of my brothers, William, was born blind. And when he was about 13, he, he, he went to the blind school in Kansas City, Kansas. And he, he worked through, the, graduated from the eighth grade there. And then they also, he took shop training, how to cane chairs and how to make hammocks and how to make brooms and then on so after that why well, he bought broom making equipment and then he uh, we raised two acres of broom corn for him every year and then the, the three brothers was able to come and we harvested you had to pull the, the heads out and then dry them and cure them and seed them and then he had it we had an old house that we made the broom shop out of, and that's where he made the brooms. Mm -hmm. And I don't know just how many he sold, but anyway, he kept busy, and they said that the house brooms they were well made, and he knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. Where did he get the handle? And they bought the handles. There was Engel Brothers sold broom equipment in Kansas City. They sold handles and uh, all the equipment that we bought. Mm -hmm. What did he get for a broom? Do you remember? Well, I kind of forgot. Either. Yeah. He would always go to Honestead to find out what the regular price was, and then if he sold them, he'd sell them at a discount to them. And he always charged the same price what what Honestead charged. You know what to do? He he had no idea what the regular price was, and it varied just like everything. How did, he, go ahead. how did your parents know that this uh, school was available for your brother? Well, it was, Mom had a cousin that was working in Kansas City, and she, she told her that there was a blind school and they would teach mm -hmm. him how to, and that's how she found out. Okay. And Mrs. Wilson was the superintendent, and she wrote Mom a letter and told him that he needed a footlocker and all the clothes he needed. And they'd meet the train, and so they went to Mr. Noel, who was a depot commander there in Waterville. And they we put him on the train, and the, the blind school met the train, and, and then took his footlocker to the school. How old was he? He was at least 15 when he started. He finished the eighth grade in about five years, I think, mm -hmm. and then uh, 
He went another year just to how to make brooms. Had he gone to school when he was home? What's that? Did he go to school while he was home before he was 15? Yeah, he, he went to school. He graduated in eighth grade, I think, the same year I did. And I was, he's about 10 years older than me. But, you know, he started later. But, uh, good opportunity for him, though. <laughs> yeah. But that's a good, that was a good school. They don't call it the blind school anymore. They call it the for the visually handicapped. Right. <laughs> what kind of adjustments did you make in your home when he was growing up? Our, so blind, the, our brother, blind brother Bill? Uh-huh. Well, Vic made him a concrete path. To, we had an old house that we made his room shop so that he could use a cane and follow the concrete sidewalk to, the, to his room house. So he got around. But uh, he claimed he never got no state aid. I used to kid him that there was a pension for blind people, but he didn't want to hear about it. <laughs> My folks took good care of him. Mm -hmm. But you, in this book it shows broom corn, it's a sorghum, just like Milo. But it's got big streams, you know. Your hand there. About the broom there. Uh -huh. The whisk broom my brother Bill made. He also made some toy brooms for his little nephews and nieces, but he didn't like to because it took more time to make a little whist broom than it did a big broom. But uh, all his equipment, the Ag Hall in Kansas City was interested, in, so we gave the equipment to them, but they never did set it up. I don't know why, but they didn't. Mm. But we would have given it to Washington County but we promised it to the Ag Hall. Kristen uh, Anderson, well, not Anderson, Bigham. Yeah. Yes, she's a sweetheart. She said, you'd be number one. Well, anyway, see, Kristen is married to Darren, and uh, Carol Bigham worked for Julianne, and she worked.